Hey guys, it's Morgan coming back to you with another schlug. Angry Zach is over here, actually quite angry. <laughs> we have a little bit of a weird situation. Ordered bearings and seals for a crank for an 85 to turn it into a 105. Anyway, we ordered whatever. Um, and they showed up. They were a little bit different. They were a roller bearing on one side and a ball bearing on the other. Uh, and anyway, when we tightened it all down, or excuse me, when Zach tightened it all down, uh, it locks up the crank. So that's pretty awesome. <laughs> so if you want to figure out how we solve that problem and all the other problems we're going to do this week, stick with us. Here we go. All right, guys, first job of the week is to put a bladder kit on that shock. Um, if you have watched some of our other videos, you know that I think the bladders are much better than the pistons for lots of reasons. Um, I'm not going to go into it here. Uh, I explain it. If you guys check out the video, uh, KTM is wrong or was wrong or anyway. I'll try to make sure I put a card up here for it. Check it out and see my full description of why I think the bladder kit is better than the piston. Uh, but we'll go into a little bit how we do it. Um, I've already showed that too, but um, like I said, we'll dive in. All right, guys, got the shock off. Uh, gonna take it apart, get the um, spring and everything off of it. Then I'm gonna do a good clean job. I mean. Really, the bike's not super dirty, but it's a little bit dirty. And we're working on suspension. I like to have things really, really, really clean. So when they go back together, uh, there's no particles of anything getting inside. So uh, I'm going to disassemble this thing, get it cleaned up, and then we'll dive into how this works. All right on, guys. It actually looks really good. Oil looks good. Like this is an appropriate timing for a uh, service. Shock body looks good, no unnecessary wear in there, so he must have had his um, clamping ring fine. Uh, he's got a uh, lowering situation here, so it looks pretty legit. It's plastic, which is interesting. Kind of, I don't totally love the fact that it wobbles around, but being that it's plastic, it won't hurt anything, I don't think. And then, uh, um, yeah, it's got little grooves cut just like this so i don't know seems must be all right i'm not going to mess with it so um, i'm going to take all this off new seal clean this all up i'm going to actually take all this now to the ultrasonic dunk the whole thing in there get it really really clean before we finish working on it all right while we wait for the ultrasonic to um warm up forgot to turn that on first thing this morning so anyway it's only at 19 degrees celsius which is not hot enough to do much cleaning. Um, also, a quick note, if you guys haven't watched the other ones, I use Fabuloso with water in the ultrasonic. It does really, really well. Run it up to about 55, 53 degrees C, uh, and super, super hot, so it's good. Um, all right, so uh, while we're waiting on that, I have the other bike from the same gentleman. So this is from one guy. This is from his friend. He brought it in for him. Uh, guy just bought a 250 TPI and he's not super happy with the power. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it's bone stock. Everything else has been pretty good for him. It's not been weird. He bought it used. Um, it's a 2020. Uh, it seems like he's like, eh, he's kind of okay with it. But we're going to give it a shot. We're going to put an RK Tech head on it, see if we can't bump the power up and see if he wants to keep it. He might get rid of it and buy a 23 with uh, throttle body injection. Um, so we'll see, but we're gonna put an RK Tech head on it too. So we'll show you how we're gonna do that. Gotta start by getting seat tank and all that stuff out of the way. So we're gonna do that while we're waiting on the ultrasonic. All right, we got the head off on these TPIs. There's a little more stuff kind of in the way, but not, you don't really have to do too much more work to get the head off. Oh, I'm just going to be careful of your injectors and all that stuff, but the head's off. Um, see if we, there we go. Cylinder looks good. Those are not actually scratches. They're just marks from uh, it running. Uh, 
but there's you know they're normal i felt them you can't feel anything whoa so yeah those are not actual marks in the plating those are just like uh carbon marks from where the ring end gaps are anyway whatever it's all good so let's take a look at the head and then what we're going to put in it all right there is the stock head uh pretty carboned up actually especially for a tpi they usually run pretty lean but this one seems to be running plenty rich richer than my bike uh definitely not oily though which is definitely a sign of in my opinion not enough oil really um in the situation it's like more like carbon like on a four stroke just from unburnt fuel so anyway i'm gonna take this we're gonna get rid of this and we're gonna take the sensor out we'll put it in the new head and we got new o-rings and uh we're gonna put evan's coolant in it and then we're gonna fire it up and take it for a spin make sure everything's good there's a beautiful lovely piece of machined awesomeness from rk tech this is the high comp head it's not the ultra high comp head it's just the high comp um that is good for six to ten thousand feet without having to do anything with the gas just run normal gas obviously got our spot for the sensor so we'll go ahead and pull this one out this o-ring is still good this bike really doesn't have very many hours on it so we're gonna reuse that o-ring Now I'm not gonna chalk this up in the soft shells. I don't wanna mar anything, but I'm gonna remember when I get this thing tightened down and all the bolts tightened down, I can torque that a little bit more, make sure it doesn't come loose. Now I'm gonna take these O-rings that the head comes with and put them down in these little grooves. go now um what i learned from actually one of you guys is <laughs> put a spark plug in here first and that helps hold this on there as we set it on so this doesn't drop down because if this drops those o-rings can get out of place and if they get out of place you'll leak coolant into the head so you don't want that um but yeah anyway and i've gone over all the benefits of the rk tech and why they're so good but the uh show you just real quick the difference between the two obviously it's all carboned up and not new but the squish shape is completely different the dome is a lot smaller creating higher compression all anyway it's a much better head they work really really good all right guys now that the head's on i can come up here with the 17 and i can put the appropriate oomph on it get ourselves a new spark plug I'm gonna bolt everything back together and then I'll check in when we start it. Make sure it sounds good. All right, guys, got it all back together. Let's hit the button and see what happens. I got Evan's coolant in it. Uh, I called the gentleman, asked him if that's what he wanted. He said yes. Um, I do really like Evan's waterless coolant in two strokes. I don't love it in four strokes. I feel like it lets them get too hot. Um, but two strokes generally, just by the nature of being a two stroke and therefore being better than four strokes, they just don't get as hot. Um, so the Evans is good. It keeps from boiling, keeps uh, everything staying cool and not building up a vapor barrier of, you know, where the part is way too hot. And then anyway, so <clears throat> let's see. There we go. eventually causes problems or whatever so one of the things I've learned uh, through the years of dealing with these things is 
fire them up even if it dies the first time around, no big deal. Fire it up, let it warm up, touch the radiator, make sure you can feel some heat in the radiator before you uh, uh, take off. I'm gonna put the seat back on this thing. I'm gonna go take it for a ride once it warms up. All right, we got these things out of the ultrasonic. So nice and shiny, so much better looking. Um, now, uh, first things first, we're going to uh, take some brake clean. I'm gonna spray this thing out and get all the water out of it. And brake cleaner works really good for that because it kind of attracts the water. So there we go. And then dries well. Same with this. I'm gonna start by taking this apart. We're gonna take all this off, slide this uh, seal head off, new seal, put this all back together. Um, I've done lots of videos on that, so I'm not gonna show you guys that you know, specifically. Uh, but then, We'll go ahead um, and we'll take this can off. I got a new one from CSR to put on that has a bladder. Real quick, guys, I want to just talk about this. Um, when you were replacing these seals, which is so much easier, like to buy a whole seal head with everything is, I forget how much, they're very expensive. Um, and sometimes you need to, if the bushing or you know, whatever is bad and, or something got messed up or you just want the ease of it. But honestly, just replacing the seal makes so much more sense financially. Um, but when you're doing it, you want to take a really good look at this bushing. Make sure it's all good. This one is in really, really good shape. Uh, so then we just take our new seal. There we go. Replace washer, the bumper. Uh, let me go back together. All right, guys, now we are ready to remove the old can uh, and get ready to replace it with our bladder kit. So I'm gonna use this I borrowed from Zach, which is pretty sweet. Um, it's heavy duty pin spanner from Motion Pro. Doesn't have a part number on it. Anyway, from Motion Pro, pretty sweet. Goes in like that and then we, we break it loose. But one of the keys, guys, is heating this up because this is on there with some Gorilla freaking Loctite. And using a giant 3 8 ratchet. There we go. Not too bad with the ratchet the length of Wyoming. Boom, there we go. There's the piston that I don't love. Now we gotta do some more cleaning because this has got still some oil and water left in it. So this screws on, a new o-ring here. And what I'm gonna do is I like to use a little bit of red Loctite on here. Got our strap wrench on here. <clears throat> and I like to make sure there's enough wrap so there's no metal touching the the uh, can, otherwise it'll mar it up and look like crap. So and we have so the bladder is inside here. There we go. I'm guessing they probably just use a Yamaha or a KYB bladder. So take that out. I like to 
put just a little bit of grease where this thing seals. There we go. <clears throat> and just a little bit of grease on the outside here to help it slide into place. Comes with circlip. Put that in place. Let me show you. That looks like and this uses a needle style nitrogen fill there we go now we're ready to just bleed it like we would a normal kyb or show a shock um and then it's got it comes with a bolt to close all that up and make sure it stays nice and clean otherwise i mean that wouldn't wouldn't work very well <laughs> um because it'd get dirt in there and probably puncture that little uh bladder to fill it so there we go guys now I'm just going to bleed this thing like I normally do. If you want to check that out, just search Highland Cycles, all one word, and then um, whatever shock you're working on for bleeding. All right, guys, next on the lift is this uh, 690. Yeah, 690. And um, it is overheating. The customer says it's overheating. I actually didn't talk to him about it, so I might need to call him because I'm not sure exactly what he means, whether it means it's actually puking cooling out or he feels like it's getting hot or a light is coming on not 100 percent sure but we're going to fire it up uh, one thing i like to do is i like to check and make sure the coolant is moving so i got the radiator cap off i got my flashlight we're going to fire this thing up and we're going to see if coolant's actually moving through the system um, because if it's not that means there might be something wrong with the water pump Did, did this guy mention anything about starting? So, <laughs> it doesn't want to start. <laughs> it does this. Almost seems like maybe a... Uh, Connection is loose on the battery. Let's find out. Oh, yep. There we go. All right, so connection was loose. Also, I noticed there's some corrosion probably from that connection being loose. So now, ha. Huh. So still not starting. Let's see. All right, guys. So that battery, I charged it up. It's dead. So we're waiting on a battery for that KTM. Uh, Grom is up next. Some simple stuff, but might be kind of interesting. But what's more interesting is let me show you what's going on over here with Mr. Sheets. We are revalving suspension on this uh, lovely 17300 XC. I think it's a 17. Anyway, it's carbureted XC gentleman mr jason stevens bought uh some aer forks that had been turned into kyb forks online and we're valving them for him and as mr sheets was pulling the top cap off of this one right he loosened it and that happened that that's not gonna work so good ever <laughs> so that's awesome so hopefully everything's okay inside there we're really hopeful i don't know well anyway we'll check back in if it's a ton of metal shards done in there, we'll check back in but uh we are going to valve that thing set it up and get it all dialed in uh even if we have to wait for parts now <laughs> i guess we're going to find out but that is uh that is unfortunate let's see here pop that thing apart look at zach look at him he's so quiet so peaceful. <laughs> Ooh, here we go. How's it look? That's good. Jason might be okay. Uh, so, yeah, he bought these online uh, and they were valve for like MX 
and um, for a lighter guy. Anyway, so he just wanted us to valve them and then valve a shock too because he shock I think was either stock or anyway whatever match it up right so anyway that's interesting we'll have to see what the other fork does we'll check in when Zach takes the other fork apart because it could be the same all right so the Grom we're over here the Grom is having an idling issue fair enough it does have an idling issue now I rode this Grom and if I start it enough times and run it it'll eventually idle just fine there it goes. Oop. Oh. But they want it to run, you know, an idle first time. Fair enough. It's a newer bike, so it should. Oop, there it goes. But the other thing is it, when you fire it up and run it, if you get on it and, like, rev it, uh, it kind of runs a little rough until it warms up. Once it warms up, it's great. So I honestly... I don't know that much about these things. This is the first one. Ah, second one we've worked on. The other one just was um, normal, you know, whatever, maintenance stuff. We rebuilt the shock, I think. But, or no, the clutch. Anyway, whatever. Um, so this is the first one I've had with, like, a running issue. Um, I don't know that I would consider this, like, that much of an issue. It's just not perfect. Um, but I did find this screw right here which I'm thinking is an idle adjust. We're gonna turn it. Oh, well that made it worse. So maybe. There we go. Oh, there's a, definitely, a, I think a sweet spot in there. So it does have just so you guys know, there's a paint mark on it that I was using for reference. So that's a little bit different than the paint mark. Uh, but the other thing, guys, that uh, these bikes, especially these kind of super simple fuel injected bikes, you shouldn't really have problems with that. It's something that can cause a bit of an issue is the air filter. So let's take a look at that. So obviously, it's got some dirt and dust on it, like it's been ridden off road. Uh, it's got a little knobby tire, too. So anyway, let's take it apart and see. All right, guys, got the air filter out. Uh, it doesn't really look too bad, but we'll blow it out. Uh, make sure that it's clean. I don't have a new one, but I don't think it needs a new one uh, yet. So, uh, Next thing we're going to check for this whole idling issue is going to be the spark plug. So that, and then I think maybe on the other side of the throttle body, there might be an actual idle adjust. That was that screw um, did some more research is just an air screw and actually i opened it up and i think it's actually a little bit better um but uh i want to let it cool off and all that stuff and then also see if there's an actual idle adjust on the other side <clears throat> all right guys so i fiddled with uh everything <laughs> fiddled with the air screw more uh fiddled with the idle adjust if there is an idle adjust um over on that other side check the spark plug spark plug is super lean i seems to be idling okay right now let's see um kind of a low idle but it idles um seems good enough for me um i still think it's probably only going to want to do that once it's warm i don't know i there's no way i don't have a way to remap this or give it more gas on the bottom or anything like that the tps is definitely locked i took a look at that there's no like slotted holes in the tps to like give it more gas on the bottom it's super locked down i think it's because it's street legal um but uh so i don't know there's much else i can do to it um maybe someone else can get in there with a different computer um or flash the ec that's on there i'm not sure anyway uh that's as far as i'm going to go with it um because i don't have any other tools uh but now we're just going to change the oil check the chain change a little bit on the loose side so we'll tighten that up and then we'll move on to the next job all right guys so real quick uh it's after hours but i've brought in the slave labor force of my son colt reed and my other son so that's thomas ewan and colt and uh they're down here we're just whipping them not paying them a thing and making them work but <laughs> actually they're actually working on their own stuff which is awesome colt's got his 97 92 92 yz250 so, so it's even yeah. more weird yeah but it's awesome because it's got a purple frame so it's like oh, damon yeah. bradshaw style 
Uh, and then Thomas actually just found out that this is his brand new to him 2013 YZ250 that uh, I got from my good friend Robbie Noyles. So Robbie Thomas Noyles. is having to do some work to make that his own. Um, and then uh, Ewan is actually, hey Thomas, hmm. you don't need to take those off. Just take that out and then the bolts out of the tank. So this side doesn't have a bolt. You don't have to take this out. Um, you can leave the shrouds on the tank. Wait. So you leave oh, the, leave the sh shrouds okay. stay attached to the tank, okay. and then you take that bolt yeah. out, and then that bolt right in there. So you look in there. These ones back in. Yeah. So you look in there. Oh yeah. There it is. Take that out, and then undo the petcock, and then the whole tank. You leave the shrouds on. Yeah. But Ewan is over here working on the KDX 200 because he lost a bet with his old man <laughs> he didn't think i could go without coffee or without caffeine coffee anyway for i forget what it was but yeah he clearly has no idea what he's dealing with so uh <laughs> i bet him that he would do the fork seals on the kdx so we lost haha <laughs> which is awesome uh but yeah that's what we do down here trying to teach these kids actually how to do something with their hands and with their bodies instead of just be on computers all day which is you know thank you guys for watching and all that but that. let's be honest we need more people like these kids in this world uh actually doing things for real um and so yeah down here learning and so yeah the leroy he's lazy and tired from the long day of hanging out um but yeah we'll get on to the next job all right, guys, so we got the KTM 690. Uh, got a battery for it, got it all warmed up, and it is definitely moving coolant. I got the cap off. It's hot to the touch, it's spilling everywhere. Anyway, coolant is moving. Now, uh, I don't know. I'm gonna have to call the gentleman and see what he means by overheating, because um, some people's definitions of things different than mine so um but we now know for a fact that it is moving coolant through the motor to the radiators um so i know that's working which means that if it's moving it should be air coming across radiating heat out of the anyway whatever uh so i'm happy about that i did find a couple things the air temp sensor was unplugged it's flashing an fi light so i figured that out uh, also had um a hose um, off of the air box that might have been sucking raw air might have been making it lean and causing it to be um, You know run a little hot too. So I'm gonna call him check in and see what's going on um, Again, sorry for the delay on the schlog guys a week back because I've got my new bike If you guys haven't checked it out yet, let me just show you Because it's so pretty there it is um, Been putting parts on it Whatever those are a whole separate set of videos but it is why the schlag is delayed a week. So apologize for that, <laughs> but it should be a good one, hopefully. I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm gonna give this guy a call, see what's going down. Next on the lift is a Beta X Trainer, 300, uh, two-stroke. Uh, I really like these bikes, they're pretty cool. Um, I don't want one, it's, it's uh, like personally, it's just kind of a small bike, but um, really neat little motorcycles uh, for shorter people. Uh, or beginners or whatever this gentleman looks like he's got some serious money into it He's got a fancy shock and forks and anyway, whatever uh, but he also has a problem <laughs> because it's stuck in first gear and You do this it There's a lot of a lot of movement and no love. I think I know what's wrong because I've seen this happen before on a beta so Guess below comment below if you think you know what's wrong um, yeah, pretty sure we're gonna start taking things apart. We'll dive in. All right, guys, so I figured it out and it's what I thought it was. I hope you guys commented below, but um, look here. Let me see. There we go. That's better. So you can see the weld is broken and it no shifty anymore so that is the second one of these i've seen on a beta also guys 
couple things that I just think are ridiculous about this beta. People always ask me, why don't you write a beta? Why don't you write a beta? Well, here's one reason. Um, the one of the power valve focus cover uh, bolts is a security bolt. Like, what? Also, I think the head is the same way. I don't know if it still is. It's got an S3 head on it, but that's weird. Uh, then here's another thing. The water, oh, there we go. The water pump is a separate thing, I guess. Maybe that's cool if you want to, I don't know, but no one else does it like that and it seems ridiculous. And then there's that. Second one of these I've seen, uh, this is the first one on a X trainer. Another one was on uh, three, just a 300 RR. Yeah, not into it. So uh, still like betas. It still might be my next bike, but this is why I haven't gone there yet. So uh, the good thing is it's a pretty easy fix. We just need to get a shift shaft, a new gasket, um, pull that out, put it back in, we'll be ready to rock and roll. But he is not going to get it by this Wednesday, which is what he was hoping <laughs> when he dropped it off on Friday. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, sorry, that's funny. So, yeah, pretty cool um, setup. I like the clutch on it, pretty cool. It's a billet steel basket, which is really nice, uh, super durable. Um, already got these Allens, six, oh, yeah, six bolt clutch um, or pressure plate, which is nice. Uh, I do like the diaphragm on the KTMs now, but I really like this setup too. It's very good, very strong. So there's a lot of good things about betas. Um, and like I said, I'm very seriously considering it being my next new motorcycle, but there's some weird things. All right, guys, got to check in here with Mr. Sheets. He's got some pretty awesome stuff. So this gentleman, whatever, working on the bike, had this gasket in upside down, right? supposed to go like that no it's no that's how it was yeah that's how it was it's supposed to go the other way and then we found this so that's kind of awesome uh, <laughs> um yeah so these are the things guys if you own a motorcycle shop these are the things that you find sometimes people i don't know if he's working on it himself or someone else is working on it i know someone else that did work on it. i'm not going to mention who that is whatever because I don't know if they did that or if he did that, but that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Some just jam things together and break them. It's pretty awesome. Uh, I am now working on this uh, 2018 TX300, uh, Mr. Justin Monroe, who is going to be selling it when I get done working on it. We're uh, going to take the smart carb off and clean it really, really good, service it and put it all back on, make sure it runs good, and then this is going to be for sale. Um, I don't know if he's going to take these plastics and graphics off of it or not. Uh, but you can see how Justin feels about it right there. Uh, so yeah, anyway. Thank you guys so much for joining me for that uh, schlag. Sorry that it was a long time coming. Uh, we're, that was two weeks basically wrapped up and actually there's a lot more that went on, but I had to boil it down to that. Um, uh, well guys, if you're watching all the way to the end, first of all, thank you. That means you're part of the punk rock club. It means that I love you more than I love other people. Uh, but also, it also means that I value your opinions very, very much because you spend a lot of time with us. Um, let me know if you like the length of the schlags. I'm kind of trying to keep them at the 30-ish minute mark. They're a little bit longer. It's like watching a TV episode um, once a week. Uh, <clears throat> also, lots of my videos end up being long. Anyway, let me know what you think about that. Also. Um, I'm trying to keep the new bike stuff on the s separate, I, I don't know. Let me know what you think about the channel right now, guys. Uh, especially you Punk Rock Club guys, you're my favorites. If you're new here and you watched all the way to the end, please consider subscribing. This is what we do. We have a lot of fun. We got a brand new motorcycle we're reviewing. We have all kinds of parts we're doing stuff on. So anyway, thanks guys so much. I hope you get out and spread the gospel two wheels. And I hope what we're doing here is inspiring you guys to work on, but more importantly, get out and ride your dirt bikes! <laughs>